Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Reproduction is a very important characteristic of living things. Reproduction prevents organisms from becoming extinct. Reproduction also helps to maintain the population of an organism. Today, we're going to look at the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. We'll start with sexual reproduction first. Now, sexual reproduction involves gametes or sex cells, particularly egg and sperm cells. Gametes are produced by meiosis. Meiosis results in haploid cells, which means the cells will have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So taking, for example, human beings with somatic cells of 46 chromosomes, when they produce gametes, the cells will have only 23 chromosomes. However, when these cells will start to fuse, as in fertilization, the nuclei will combine and produce a haploid cell. The very interesting thing about sexual reproduction is that it results in diversity or variation among the offspring because they will be different among themselves and also different from their parents genetically because each offspring is a mixture of characteristics or traits or chromosome from both parents. Now asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction involves one parent and no need for any gametes. There are many different types of asexual reproduction. We we'll look at a few. Binary fission, for example. Budding. Vegetative reprodu um, reproduction or propagation. Sporulation. Fragmentation. Regeneration. Tissue culture. And cloning. Now, binary fission... This is where one cell split into two new cells, as the word fission suggests, splitting. So this type of reproduction is a kind of a exponential growth in that this is rapid and very fast. So one parent cell produces two new cells. Each of those cells will further divide into two other cells. And each of those cells will further divide into two other cells. And hence you have a very large population or colony in a very short period of time. This is a very popular type of reproduction among, among bacteria and some microorganism or single cellular organism. We also have what are called budding. Budding is when an organism, for example, this case is hydra, will produce a bud. The bud will eventually separate and then develop into a self-sustaining sustaining organism. Vegetative propagation, which is quite a number of examples, and vegetative propagation can be done artificially or naturally. It is typically among plants, and once you hear the word vegetative, you're talking about the different parts of plants such as the leaves, stems and roots. So cutting for example can be done with stems, leaves, roots. You also have it with bud, bulb, corm, tuber, rhizome and runners. Vegetative propagation can be done by grafting which is cutting a piece of stem and tie it onto another stem and it eventually grow into a new plant. We also have air layering and these are some examples of the type of vegetative propagation. So on the further left corner, you have a air layering where moist soil is tied onto a piece of stem that was scraped. So the bark was removed and the cambium was also removed. And then you tie that moist soil. Eventually roots will develop and you can remove that and put it in the ground and get a new plant. We have cuttings and cuttings is very popular among rose. We have tubers and we have corn or, or bulb. For example, in ginger, you have rhizome. And if you notice the tip of the highlighted portion of the ginger, 
you have a new sprout that is growing this piece can be removed and you eventually will get a new plant sporulation otherwise called spore formation is very popular among fungi such as the pin mole um, you will see pin mole on bread after a while if it becomes if it becomes stale and so the pin mole will produce spores and the spores will eventually separate and germinate into new pin moles fern also produce spores if you look at the back of the leaflet of fern you will see some spores these spores will eventually disperse by means of wind or water and in some cases animals and then they will germinate in different location and produce more plants fragmentation fragmentation is a very cool and interesting type of reproduction in for example a planaria a planaria can be divided into different fragments and each fragment will develop into a new organism we also have regeneration regeneration is kind of a similar to fragmentation but there's a difference in regeneration is that if a part of the organism is missing then that organism will be able to regrow that portion that missing portion over a period of time tissue culture and otherwise called micropropagation and we also have cloning they're kind of a similar but there's a simple difference between both and in tissue culture you use a tissue of the organism opposing to cloning in cloning you use a single cell and develop that single cell into an into an entire organism the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction there are so many there are a lot of them but we are lighting a few today and so for asexual reproduction for asexual reproduction there's only one parent while in sexual reproduction you need two parents or at least a male and a female reproductive part the reason why i state it this way is because for example in flowers a flower a single flower will contain both male and female reproductive parts hence even though it's one flower it is still sexual because a male and female part are involved in fact you have gametes involved in sexual in sexual reproduction there can be competition for mating or finding mate while in a sexual reproduction there is no need to have a competition in finding mate in sexual reproduction it involves gametes opposing to asexual there is no need for gamete in sexual reproduction the sex cells are produced by meiosis in asexual reproduction the cells are produced by mitosis because of mitosis because of meiosis division the process is longer and slower because of mitosis the process is shorter and faster generally sexual reproduction will result in a lot in a very few um, offspring while in asexual reproduction it will result generally in many offspring in sexual reproduction there tend to be diversity or variation variation among the offspring while in asexual reproduction there tend to be no form of variation now we a question here is that are these advantageous or disadvantageous now the thing is that I'm going to make this exclusively clear that these can be stated as either advantage or disadvantage. So therefore there is no clear cut advantages or disadvantages when it comes on to asexual or sexual. It depends on the situation. So if you should list any of these as, ad as advantage or disadvantage, I will implore you to explain why so let's take for example the first one so requiring two parents is that advantage or disadvantage well it could be both now having two parents 
or there's a need for two parents for sexual reproduction, an advantage for that is that the parent could choose the trait or characteristic that need to be reproduced with. So if you have a desirable trait in mind, you can reproduce with that trait or the parent with that trait to produce possible offspring with similar trait. However, in asexual reproduction, there's no choosing. That trait will be maintained. So that could be advantage or disadvantage if you want that trait to maintain or not. A competition for mating could be an advantage and also it could be a disadvantage. An advantage could be in the sense that it could slow down the mating rate or mating process in that it reduces the time span in how fast organism will mate. You know, it, it, it reduces the chance of rapidly growth of certain population so there's a kind of a population control however a disadvantage could be that one some organism may not fit to compete or may unable to compete or may not be aggressive enough to compete hence they may not get a chance to mate and reproduce and the opposing is true for asexual reproduction there's no competition, so therefore they could reproduce rapidly, and that could lead to overpopulation, as well as it could be an advantage if you require a lot of that organism. Now, in terms of longer, because meiosis and longer process is kind of tied into each other, mitosis and fast are kind of tied into other. I'm going to explain those um, together, right? So let's say, for example, um, my, um, sexual reproduction is taking a longer time. Again, that could help with population control. However, it can be a disadvantage if the organism is on the verge of becoming extinct. The, this, the reverse is true for asexual. A shorter time or faster reproduction, reproductive time could prevent extinction of that organism. A disadvantage for that, it could also lead to overpopulation. The same thing is, you could explain few and many organisms similarly to long and shorter process because few organisms mean that it's easier for that organism to become extinct if there is a disease or a natural disaster or slow adaptation to the environment. Producing few offspring can also help to control population. Producing many organisms, you could prevent extinction easily. Also, it could lead to overpopulation. Again, if the asexual organism is a predator, then it could be dangerous for other organisms because there'd be a lot of predator comparing to prey. Also, if the organism is invasive, then you can have an overgrowth of that population and could cause a disturbance within the food chain or ecosystem if the organism is invasive. Now, diversity and diversity is or variation is one of a, is a big thing when it comes on to even explain advantages and disadvantages. Now, producing diversity or organisms that are different could be advantage could be an advantage in that if there was a disease within the population there's a possible chance especially if that if that disease is genetic that disease can become suppressed if you have more random mating and hence you have normal cells without the disease being mating together and then over time that disease could become um, extinct or disappeared um, diversity could help with, ad with adaptation to certain environmental changes it could even produce new organisms with new traits that could camouflage better in certain situation it can also reduce undesirable characteristics or traits so if the characteristics or trait is deemed undesirable Mating sexually could reduce those undesirables. 
in asexual reproduction producing identical offspring can be advantage and disadvantage so the advantage could be if the parent organism has suitable or desirable traits for adaptation on all and even for production then you want to maintain that trait so taking for example if you have a plant that produces quality fruits then you'd prefer to maintain those quality fruits by reproducing asexually However, a disadvantage could be if those traits are not favorable or desirable, then those undesirable traits will pass on to the offspring and there is no change. Even for adaptation, if the parent has a huge problem in adapting to certain environmental changes, the offspring will also be unable to adapt to those changes. So both ways in terms of the characteristics or traits of or features of sexual and asexual reproduction they can be advantage advantage or disadvantages depending on how you explain them so please when you explain just had the explanation why and why not all right so we're at the end of the lesson now so i hope i see you in the next lesson so see you soon